All right, everybody, and welcome to Comics and Coffee for August 15th, 2013, starting your day off the nerdy way. I am your host, Bobby Shortle, and I'm here with Mara Wood. Good morning. Good morning, Mara. Um, I got to tell you, today was the first morning where I kind of cursed myself for deciding to do this morning show. Oh, why is that? I just did not want to get out of bed. <laughs> like, I had to get out of bed because I had to go to work, obviously, but I want, you know, I was like, I want to read comics or play video <laughs> games before I go to work. I don't want to talk again. Um, <laughs> but I'm glad, obviously, that we're doing it and that we're here. Um, so uh, we had a couple kind of big stories that, that broke uh, this, actually, after we did the podcast already. So we, it, it's, this is... The, sh- the reason for the show, which when I, when I started it, we finally, it's, it's happened. We have a big news story that broke the day our the big podcast came out, and we won't be able to talk about it until next week, but now we can talk about it uh, right now. Um, so last, uh, last week on Bleeding Cool, there had been a, a, a small news item, really, re- reporting that uh, Matt Fraction could possibly be off Fantastic Four uh, and FF. And actually, that story just said FF. Not really delineating between between the two books. Um, but yesterday, uh, on Wednesday, n- New Comic Day, uh, it broke uh, uh, on uh, officially uh, on CBR that Matt Fraction, due to his workload on Inhumanity and all the other books that he is, he is currently working on, he needed to take a break from something, um, and it ended up being FF. Um mm-hmm. So, and Fantastic Four. And Fantastic Four, yes. So this is, Tom Brevoort was on CBR, uh, and he said that Matt Fraction is, is in fact, leaving both the Fantastic Four and FF titles. Um, yeah, uh, the, Matt's last solo written issue of Fantastic Four will be number 12, and his last full FF will be issue number 11. Um, the, uh, so the, it, it, with It's Humanity coming up, and it's just, there isn't, there isn't enough time to do everything. Um, Taking over Fantastic Four is Carl Ke- uh, Carl Kessel, who wrote uh, the Harley Quinn ongoing for DC, um, and has also written some Fantastic Four and, and some Daredevil. Um, and actually, Mike Allred's older brother Lee Allred is taking over FF, so that will be a a, a whole a whole uh, uh, Allred book, um, <laughs> which I think is gonna be funny. Uh, I think he said he just wants Allred times three to be on the cover it's of the. Be, it's gonna be awesome. Of the book. Um, so, we talk about Matt Fraction a lot, obviously. Uh, yeah. Hawkeye, FF, the, the, his indie stuff, well, there's a multitude of reasons we, we talk about Matt, and uh, we've been loving his stuff there. How do, do you read the FF books, Mara, and does, how does this announcement affect you? Um, I do read both FF and Fantastic Four. Um, I think FF is the stronger of the two books, just my own personal preference. I'm sad to see him leave because I thought he was such a strong writer and had such a different voice for both those books and that, you know, kind of just showed, you know, how you can take kind of the same story but split it up differently. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm excited to see what he's going to be bringing to us from Image and from the Inhumanity Mm -hmm. series. I mean, if if it's taxing enough to have to drop two major Marvel books, then you know he's putting a lot of effort into them. Yeah, absolutely. Hopefully, mm-hmm. um, but I'll, I mean, I'll still I'll still be picking up FF and Fantastic Four. And just, I mean, I love the I love the kids in FF. I, I can't help it. Just um, Bentley. Yeah, Bentley's <laughs> awesome. Um, but it's it's a kind of a, a shock because he was doing so well with those books. I mean, you wouldn't think that that'd be the one to ones he would drop. Yeah, you know, I, I, well, I mean, I love Fantastic Four and FF. I, I especially love, like you said, his FF stuff. I think it has that, um, I think Fantastic Four is a much more traditional superhero book. I mean, obviously it has the fraction touch on it, but it, it still feels a lot more like a classic adventure story, mm-hmm. which is very good, and, the, and especially this past issue that came out on Wednesday has begun to link those two books even more with you know, um, FF and Fantastic Four. Um, but FF has always seemed like uh, 
that seems like the, all the personality that he he's, you've seen in his other work is is present in FF. He's a little bit more daring with that. He's willing to do a little bit more uh, uh, out out there stuff with that book, and especially with just with the the mixing of that and with Allred being the artist on that book, there, the combination makes it look and feel like no other book really, you know, out there. Um, right. And I'm sad to see him off that book. However, if it had to be the choice between dropping FF and Fantastic Four or not doing Hawkeye anymore, uh, it, 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 he, I, I'm glad that he chose this because mm-hmm. listen, Fantastic Four and FF they will go on without Matt Fraction, and yeah. you know who who knows how Lee Allred's going to do. I've never read, I've never I don't think I've ever read any of his work before. Neither have uh, I. He he's done some some Teen Titan stuff. He's done some major stuff. He's written novels. So. Uh, it, 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 you know, we'll see what happens there. Um, and uh, the other, the other gentleman whose name now I cannot remember, Carl Kessel. Kessel. Never had anything else from either, but obviously he's mm-hmm. done, um, done consistent work at both the big companies uh, before. Yeah. Um, those books will go on without Matt Fraction. Hawkeye, if Matt Fraction wasn't on that book, it would die. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I don't think that book continues. Without Matt Fraction and David and David Aja and the kind of the arsenal of artists that yeah. Matt Fraction has brought along with him, that have adopted and embraced the bizarre nature of that book. So I would rather see him off these books, and I'm sure some of my podcast mates will disagree when we talk on uh, 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 this yeah. next Wednesday. But I'd rather see him off those books than see him off a book like Hawkeye. Yeah, uh, I. Yeah. yeah, I'd have to say Hawkeye is just one of those weird books that came across as a major surprise. You never, mm-hmm. I mean, I never imagined actually caring for Hawkeye, and I knew who the character was before the Avengers movie. Um, and I think you're right. If if Fraction and Aja, am I saying that right, Aja? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Or I've been saying that. it wrong for a year and a half, so <laughs> that's the other option. <laughs> we're we're going to go with it. Um, yeah. If they if they weren't on that book, I I can't imagine who else could devote that kind of attention and care towards this character and keep that same feel, that mm-hmm. same humor to it. Yeah, absolutely. I, I abs- absolutely agree with you. Uh, so we'll see. And also, I'm very excited about Inhumanity. I'm very excited about seeing a group of characters who have not not maligned is the wrong word, but been such low level, even in my experience with comics. I, every, the little bits I've seen of them I've really loved so to get to see them have their own book and really become a major major force in the Marvel Universe which seems to be what they're setting up for them um, I, you know I would rather see him devoting his attention to you know doing things like he did with Hawkeye which is taking a character that people know and people, some people like whatever but doesn't really support so, a solo series before to li- lift them up to a point where they're in the conversation Mm-hmm. Every month and and month in and month out. Yeah, and also, I mean, he's got Satellite Sam and Sex Criminals from Image, mm-hmm. and Satellite Sam we've seen two issues of so far, and Sex Criminals we've seen covers and solicits for. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm excited to see what he's going to bring to us with his own characters. Yeah, absolutely. And we're going to see a bunch of yeah, and uh, Odyssey is coming up as well. Yeah, he's writing for Image. So he's got a lot, a lot of work going on, um, and more Matt Fraction is always good. Matt Fraction, mm-hmm. uh, you know, there's also been rumors of more Casanova stuff, um, which is a book that I haven't read, but I, I hear nothing but yeah. uh, amazing things about. So it's a big shakeup, and especially shakeup. I, I think, listen, he's been writing them for, I guess it's less than a year. I guess he's, I know, but he's done in co- combination of the of the two, uh, you know, he's done like he's gonna be I don't know, doing around 30 issues of that universe by the time it's ending, and well, that's not an epic run, that's a pretty good chunk of, uh, of mm-hmm. stuff that we have. And also, yeah. it's important to note that at least for the, I, I think for the, I don't know the exact numbering, but for issues preceding, um, uh, proceeding, uh, the, the ones that he's done scripting by himself, he will still be uh, credited on the book as a plotter. They're going to go mm-hmm. from his plot and write from his plot at least for a little while yeah. until they're done with the, the story. So you're not going, it's not as if, you know, your favorite television show is getting canceled before the, 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 you get to see the end of the story. You're going to get to see the end of what Matt Fraction was planning, at least for this first big piece, 
And then from there, you know, we don't know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And, right, and I think what's most important to remember about him leaving the book is that he came on with the Marvel Now, the kind of mini, not really reboot, but you know, reintroduction of a lot of characters. So he already set the tone for us for those two books, and that's what we're going to expect. And I think Marvel and their editors know what to bring from that. So, yeah. I mean, it's, it's probably going to still keep to that personality and flair that we've seen so far. I mean, they're going to be, you know, tweaking it because of writers, but I don't think it's going to deviate too far from what we're used to since Marvel now. Yeah, no, I'd agree with you, too. And I think that... Now, we don't know what's going to happen after Inhumanity is over. Obviously, there's the Inhumans ongoing that, they, that they're mm -hmm. going to do, but after the event itself is over... Um, who knows what Fraction will do and what time he's going to have, you know, to do what. Because, yeah. it, you know, it, this might be a thing where he comes back to the books when he's done working on that other stuff and has the time to uh, dedicate to doing them again. But the other thing, too, is I don't think that, if that's not the case, I think that you'll see these writers kind of, you know, um, w you know kind of ride the wave of, of this story and then... I don't know if you're going to see the, these writers stay on these books only because these are pretty high-profile high books mm -hmm. at Marvel. And if you look at the other high-profile series, they all have high-profile names uh, attached to them. You know, so I, I I can't see them not going after some somebody big to take on the the FF books. I think I think FF itself, Future Foundation. Is a little uh, maybe the uh, Lee Allred is a little bit safer because that mm -hmm. book has a big and Mike Allred's a pretty big name already and yeah. has a draw of his own, so that might be a little bit more stable. But I do not see Carl Kessel probably being the unless he, unless he start unless he's amazing and then I think they probably will keep him. But mm -hmm. if he's if he's just in the like in a, in a kind of a okay level, I think they'll definitely look to replace him. Yeah, I was surprised that Christopher uh, Sabella, the guy who the guy who is co-wrote. F, this last issue of FF with Matt Fraction and mm -hmm. wrote a bunch of Captain, Captain Marvel, Marvel with Kelly Sue wasn't the one who got the gig because it seemed like he is was kind of the go-to guy with that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that now that she said that, that is very surprising. Yeah. But maybe he's got his own thing going on. Maybe he's got. Yeah. Who, who knows? Maybe Absolutely. He just, maybe he just didn't want to take full responsibility for it. Maybe not. Maybe not. <laughs> but I, th I think Steve said it best on. Talking comics. Um, I think in a comment he said something about, "I understand why he's dropping these two books. I mean, not only is he writing X, Y, and Z, but he's mm -hmm. got a family. Yeah. And if you follow him and Kelly Sue on Twitter, they're constantly putting up pictures of their two kids and, you know, hanging out with Brian Michael Bendis and all that kind of stuff. So yeah. I mean, it, it's important to keep in mind that these creators have a life outside yes. of comics. Which, what? I said yes. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, I mean, especially if you have two small kids, mm. it's a huge balancing act. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, uh, it, it, and I would rather get, um, you know, a fantastic Inhumans and fantastic Hawkeye and fantastic his, uh, you know, his indie stuff, Sex Criminals and, and mm -hmm. Satellite Sam, uh, rather than a lesser version of all of them with yeah. Fantastic Four and FF included in that. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I'm, you know, I'm happy about it. And it's not like Matt Fraction, it's not like, Matt Fraction is literally tur probably turning down money to drop mm -hmm. those books. I mean, he would get paid to do those books. So, yeah. it, 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 it's, it, it's funny, because this is the first time this has really happened since I've been doing this, where someone who's have, have a run that's pretty successful, that people like, is stepping away in, in the middle of it. So, yeah. Uh, what do you guys? If, let, let us know what you guys think uh, of the Matt Fraction thing. Uh, you can go to tugcombooks.com and we have a, a, a new story up there. You can comment there at tugcombooks on Twitter or Facebook.com/slash Talking Comics. All right, um, Mara, you had another uh, story you wanted to bring up, correct? Yes, and this one is just like reading an article about it just cracks me up. Um, we've known for quite some time that Ben Diesel has been courted by Marvel to be in a Marvel movie, and he's been pretty open about. You know, I'm going to go Marvel Studios. I'm going to go talk to Marvel executives, and you know, everyone's just in a flutter. Like, there's so many Marvel movies coming out. Who could he be? Who could he be? Who could he be? Um, 
I was browsing through the Mary Sue the other day and I saw that uh, he more or less admitted to playing Groot for mm -hmm. Guardians of the Galaxy, which <laughs> is probably the best role ever for this, <laughs> for Finn Diesel, because, <laughs> I mean, look at him. He's a rather attractive, very muscular, already fit and ready to play a superhero. And he's playing a tree. <laughs> yeah, he's playing a talking tree. <laughs> um, while it's not officially confirmed right now, he's either either he's trolling everyone, or he's just like I don't care. Uh, you know, I, I can't say I'm Groot, but I really like this tree. Let me post a picture of it on Facebook, and mm. let me let me talk about defying expectations. <laughs> so. Yeah, he um, he's an interesting guy, right? Because he uh, we talked about this a little bit on the the show this week. He he is a big like a big geek when it comes to the stuff that he likes and the stuff that he he does. He's a big gamer. He's very tapped into that culture, um, which is funny because obviously you know he, in, you know stereotypically doesn't look like <laughs> the typical person who's into that kind of stuff. Um, you know he was so. interesting. This. They asked him so why Groot, uh, and this originally comes from um, Hero Complex. Um, he says I'm an actor. I can do whatever the bleep I want as an actor. Not everything has to be the most obvious choice. And sometimes the best thing you can do, as far as, as far as Steven Spielberg and his advice, is to defy expectations. So everybody thinks you're going to go for this one thing, and you flip it entirely and go for the strangest Marvel character. <laughs> it's interesting. And when something's interesting, it's inspiring. Um, and they asked him about the, you know, the, the guarded nature of Marvel with its movies, and are they mad that he's been dropping hints. He said, the last thing they are is mad. I'm pretty open, but I have been secretive about this. I went to Comic-Con and got blasted while I was on the Hall H panel for Riddick. Someone asked a Marvel question. I couldn't say anything because of the secrecy. And he, one more thing he said was, I'm so busy, the audience wanted Vin and Marvel, Vin and Marvel, but I'm too busy to do a six-month role. So what Marvel came up with was really interesting. I'm watching a social wave influence and in some ways guide their thinking. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's cool. And it, it, I mean, why not? You know, yeah. s somebody had to do the voice of Groot. And it's cool that they got somebody like Vin Diesel, you know, to to do that voice. We mm -hmm. still don't know if this is going to be, you know, three word Groot like he is now, where it's just different variations of I am Groot um, that mean a range of things, or if it's going to be someone who a character that, that speaks more, a more traditionally, you know, animated character. But yeah. uh, regardless, it's it's pretty cool. I mean, uh, do you like Vin Diesel, Ma? I like him just fine. Um, I don't actively seek out images or movies with him in it, but he's not—he's not like a a repellent to me like Nicolas Cage is. Um, <laughs> I I will tell you this: like I've got goosebumps just thinking about when I go see Guardians of the Galaxy and I hear "I Am Groot" for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I mean I think I think he's going to do a good job with Groot. I'm still. I'm still holding out for H. John Benjamin for Rocket Raccoon because I think that would be the best. <laughs> I think Marvel should just listen to me and just go mm. hire him if they haven't already and just kept it a secret. Um, I think I think Vin Diesel is doing kind of a, I don't want to say smart thing, but very interesting thing by kind of hinting heavily that he's going to be playing Groot. Mm -hmm. um, at, this, at this point in the game, I mean, we've We've been dying to know who are going to be the voice actors. I mean, we've seen, you know, images from Guardians. We kind of know who's playing who, and Groot and Rocket are just like, okay, we've seen the characters. We want to, we want to hear them. I mean, that's right. that's what's going to draw us to those those characters. I mean, yeah. So I, I think he's being smart about it, kind of, basically coming out and saying it without, you know, saying I am Groot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um. Because it's it's creating more buzz about the movie, you know, like there wasn't enough in the first place. But it's just kind of, you know, it's also, you know, there's been rumors that, or speculation that he might play uh, Ultron or Vision or mm -hmm. Ant Man or you know just all this kind of stuff just rummaging around. But if he's just basically saying, I'm gonna play the character you don't think I'm gonna play, and here are some pictures of it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, 
it's cool, and obviously, uh, it's it's funny. It, this you mentioned Ashawn Benjamin. H, I love Ashawn Benjamin. Obviously, I mean, he's a, a funny, yeah, a really funny guy. Uh, who, who? I mean, I love Archer to death. That's what, uh, that show. And Bob's Burgers. Well, I don't watch Bob Burgers, so I don't really. Oh. I, I can't. I can't. I can't comment on Bob's Burgers, but I, I will say that I I do definitely love. Um, Love him, and I think that he's great. But I really do think that Marvel is going to look to cast someone huge in mm-hmm. that role. I think they want um, they they want something that's going to make big waves mm-hmm. in 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 the in the world, and they can cast a movie star because they like, like just like Vin Diesel, he doesn't have to be you know he doesn't have to be there um, yeah. for very long to do that role. Um, yeah, I, I, it's it's funny to me how how much, how big the, the buzz is for this movie right now. Yeah. I mean, did, yeah. you, did you see the leaked images of it? The leaked I trailer? Did, yeah. Yes, I did. Oh, it looks so cool. And just um, yeah. the, the spoken line about, they call themselves the Guardians of the Galaxy. What a bunch of a-holes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just like automatic smile to my face. And I yeah. will say, um, I, never gave, I never gave two thoughts about Guardians of the Galaxy. Mm-hmm. Until Marvel announced the movie, and that's just how Marvel works. They're like, "Oh, you don't remember Iron Man very well? Here's an Iron Man movie." Yeah. Or let's let's revive. Uh, I, don't know, I guess Thor was never down in the dumps, but you know, it's just like let's create more buzz about these characters. And yeah. the fact that they're going Guardians of the Galaxy, I'm like, hmm, yeah. let's go check them out. <laughs> and uh, I mean. This this cat I'm gonna show that, I'm gonna put an image up right now that we that uh, from that 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 video uh, that's just amazing. All right here we go. <laughs> <laughs> like, come on, come on! Like you need and I think we were just on Twitter. Like you need another reason to go see Guardians of the Galaxy than this than this right here. Right it's there. It's yeah. amazing. That is amazing. Um, it's just a. Uh, it, it, I, and I talked about, talk about it on the show, and I read the tweet out, and I, I don't have it in front of me right now, but someone from CBR was like, Warner Brothers in DC is all like, Wonder Woman is too difficult and confusing. And Disney and Marvel are like, here's a raccoon with a machine gun. <laughs> you know, so it's just uh, funny. It's, it's great stuff, and it uh, looks like it's going to be a ton of fun and different yeah. from the other stuff, so it'd be very, very cool. Um, uh, so we're going to get here soon, but I, won't, I didn't want to get here without... We had, we had one listener write in, and I'm... I don't know if Mara, you have uh, this is from Justin Townsend, and he wanted to know what we thought of the opening of Infinity. Uh, I don't know if you have read it, uh, Mara. I haven't. <laughs> I we um, our our store did like the pre-release launch thing, so not only do I have it, but I have like the Scotty Young little picture that came with it. That oh my goodness, just adorable. Um, after after reading Age of Ultron and that final moment. Mm-hmm. In that last issue, I really do need to get on hunger and infinity. Mm-hmm. Have them just, you know, it's just in that stack. That's yeah, gay big now. <laughs> yeah, but started, what did you think? I uh, what's well, cool? It's interesting because it really, I mean, this more plays directly off of Hickman's Avengers work. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're reading New Avengers and Avengers, this this feels, and this is the best thing about it to me, is that it feels less like a manufactured event and more just like the natural continuation of the work that he's doing in those books. Yeah. So if you're enjoying those books, I, I, I think you'll definitely enjoy this. Um, I wrote this on Twitter too. I think that the best thing about it is I didn't want it to be over. You know, it, it, it's, it's a very big, it's a very thick book. It's, it's five dollars, so it's, it's, mm-hmm. it, it costs some money. Uh, it's, but it's very big and very substantial. Plus you get the free um, infinite comic with it that features the Silver Surfer, which I haven't I got a chance to read yet. Um, but it's uh, it, it it was really really good and it 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 puts I think other event books to shame in a lot of ways that we've seen in the last couple of years at least mm-hmm. because this feels like it, it 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 is substantial and it's going to mean something just simply on a character note you know and, and that's important plus the art by Jim Chung is beautiful it's gorgeous stuff. Um, if you've seen his work uh, in like Avengers, uh, the Children's Crusade, you know how great his stuff can look. But 
yeah, it, it's a it's a it's a great it's a great great start, and I need to read it again because it's a John Hickman book, obviously. Uh, but I'm excited though that it's a John Hickman book that I know the story of it's going to wrap in six issues, seven issues, yeah. whatever it's going to be, and that's exciting to me. So because I don't have, I'm not thinking like five years in the future. I'm thinking okay, this at least this part of the story is going to end in in <laughs> in, uh, in a couple of months. So I'll be yeah. able to sink it all, have it all sink in. Um, but you don't have to have anybody that are wondering. You don't have to have read Age of Ultron. You don't have to be reading Hunger to really get the events of Infinity at all. Now I heard from my comic book provider that it may be difficult to read Infinity without reading any of the Avengers or New Avengers, any of the Jonathan Hickman. And I think you you kind of hinted at that, like it's a continuation of that. That natural story. Yeah. Um, it is. Would you say would you say that you can read Infinity and at least understand what's going on without reading any of Hickman's Avengers or New Avengers? Hmm. That's t- that's a good question. It's a tough question to answer too because having read all that stuff and having reread it all recently. Yeah. Um, I, I think that there are events in, in Infinity that, or there are things hinted at in Infinity that I understand. I know what they're talking about. I know what's going on. Where if you hadn't have read those books, you wouldn't know. But that doesn't mean. I, but I'm not sure because I'm. I know it so well, and because I'm like, oh, that's what they're talking about. I don't know if those events, those references, will even be picked up by people who mm-hmm. haven't read those books. So they might be able to read through it and not even, and just enjoy it for what it is. But anybody who's read Jonathan Hickman's work before knows how dense it is and and how involved it is. Yeah. And. Here he is. He's explaining some things. Like he kind of, kind of explains to you, like what the kind of what the Illuminati has been up to in, in New Avengers, what's been going on with the Inhumans, what's been going on with the Avengers. Um, you know, hinting at other aspects of what people have been doing and the events. There's. It's funny because there's even. Sorry about this. There's even uh, a little bit of. Uh, some events happen in uh, Young Avengers that kind of come into play a little bit here, um, just just in like a very uh, <laughs> peripheral way, um, with some Cree that we you see in <laughs> New Avengers. I mean, Young Avengers. Uh, but it, it, whether or not that it'll be impenetrable for somebody who's not reading those books, I think you're definitely definitely going to be on the short end of the stick mm-hmm. because, I mean, there's something that's going on. You know, knowing who the builders are, knowing who, knowing what the gardeners do, knowing, you know, uh, what's been going on on Earth as far as the the, the star brand and uh, th- those characters popping up, and you know, his whole thing with systems being broken and the universe kind of spinning off of its, it, you know, getting out of whack, and everything that's happening in New Avengers, where the, the secrecy of the, this group of people doing these kind of very underhanded things and dealing with this almost kind of crisis on Infinite Earths type of scenario that's happening it, with them, I think even people who are reading Avengers and not reading New Avengers are missing out on a lot of context. So you that's the one thing about it is unlike a lot of Marvel events that have come before in the last two years or so, and even lot, most DC events are good, very good with this as well, yeah. I mean, even, probably even better at this than the Marvel events are, it's, it's not as new reader friendly as those past ones were, because you look at yeah. you know, Age of Ultron, while it's it's steeped in a lot of pre, um, you know, a, a lot of continuity, it's also a, a scenario that people yeah. who don't read comics a lot can understand very simply. It's a post-apocalyptic world where mm-hmm. the robots have taken over. We've seen that story a bunch. And they know. gave you a lot of things in the beginning. They yeah. they gave you everything you need to know in the mm-hmm. what ten issues. Yeah. To to enjoy the book. Right. And from what I heard. Infinity sounds like just a you know a natural book to pick up for Avengers fans. Absolutely. And I was yeah. yeah I was just looking through my comicsology and um, like I shared this account with with a, a few friends and one of my friends picked up Avengers and I am 12 issues behind on that series. <laughs> so I'm like I will not be reading Infinity just yet. <laughs> I was right with you until about uh, a, week, a week ago actually because I was like oh Infinity's coming up I'm gonna have to talk about it. Um, I gotta catch up on all these books, and it was better actually reading them all lumped together because I think Hickman's work works better yeah. that way. But just I'm just gonna let it build up. Yeah. <laughs> Once it gets to thirty, we'll dive in. Yeah, Avengers. Uh, like 
And unlike Avengers vs. X-Men as well, which the quality of the event notwithstanding, it's pretty simple for you to understand, yeah. you know, what, what, what's going on. And again, with DC stuff, they're, they're much, like, something like Flashpoint, which is really, was really their last universe-wide event before we've got coming up with Forever Evil, um, it, it's an alternate future and all this stuff, all this... If you're reading the chronology of what's happening, it, it plays on it, but also it does a very good job of being like, okay, this is just what's going on now. Um, mm-hmm. in, that's not what Infinity is. Infinity feels like, I think we're on Avengers like 15, I think just happened. It feels like, you know, this is Avengers 16. It could, it could be, uh, but with a lot more scope. I don't want to, I don't want to downplay it in that way. It feels mm-hmm. huge. It just feels very much the natural progression of what's happening over there, and in a way, that's a good thing. You know, I, I think that. Yeah. A lot of times what we run into with these events, and the problems with them is that they try to serve both masters, mm-hmm. and they end up serving neither. So yeah. if this book just wants to be its own thing, and and the writing is good enough, and the visuals are good enough where you can appreciate them, I just I don't know how easy it is to understand. And I'd like to, if anyone out there that's listening to this, listens to our show, doesn't read Avengers or New Avengers, and picked up Infinity... I'd really like to know like what you think of it and, and how well you're doing picking it up. Uh, you know, like I said, at Talk Comics on Twitter, Facebook.com uh, slash Talk Comics or TalkComicBooks.com is the is the website. Um, mm-hmm. Because it, it sometimes I feel like you know you can't see the forest for the trees when you're in it too deep. And at this point, with with all this stuff, we're, I'm in it pretty deep as far as the yeah. comic book stuff goes. So sometimes. I always try to remove myself from the kind of the inside baseball part of it, um, but we'll see. We'll see what, what yeah. people think of it. And as far as events go, like those those wide universe spreading events, I mean they're they're good and everything, but I I have a preference towards the smaller ones, like um, the Enemy Within, the Captain Marvel Avengers Assemble mini event. Those five issues that dealt with the character I really like only pulled in the characters that were directly involved with it. I mean, I like those events and enjoy them a lot more than um, Avengers vs. X-Men or Flashpoint or stuff that he tries to bring in everyone all at once in one fell swoop. Yeah, so. and, uh, and I agree with you, absolutely. I mean, that's why something like, you know, Throne of Atlantis, when DC did the Aquaman Justice League crossover, uh, it was awesome. It was really, really mm-hmm. great. And it was because it dealt with just characters that, in a, in a small scale, with a very contained story. And I think that what happens with the event stories is the same thing that happens with a lot of these big stories in any medium. Whereas some, you, a lot of times you lose the... By trying to be so dramatic and so big and so epic, you lose the, any connection an audience member can have to it because saving the world is not something that you can connect with on an emotional level. Like, you just can't do it. You know, mm-hmm. so there's got to be a through line there, which is why Enemy Within is so good, is because she has a very personal mission. She's trying to protect the people. There is like a world in peril situation happening there, but she is the the the, the bottom line. She's trying to protect the people she loves, uh, and it's about her personal struggle to overcome th- this debilitating thing that's been happening to her, yeah. and the struggle, and not not just the physical stuff, but the kind of mental. Uh, struggles she's been having dealing with where her powers have been for the last, you know, storyline or two. Mm -hmm. That stuff is very easy to connect with because even though you don't have superpowers, you can connect with those kind of struggles in your own way. Um, You know, being like, oh, the cosmic phoenix force is coming to Earth and and I have to develop the right kind of, you know, uh, weapon to destroy it uh, before it hits here does not give context to to Mm -hmm. the reader. Um, yeah. you can enjoy that on an abstract level and it can be the bigger story but there's got to be a smaller story um, at hand and I think I think that Infinity has that Infinity has because while Hickman deals in giant stories th- those he stitches them with very intricate character portraits like if you read his F- F- Fantastic Four stuff there's big stuff happening there like you know time you know millennia spanning stories but they all it's also together with with a very tight group of characters that he really explores very deeply. Mm-hmm. And I think this is doing uh, the same thing. So hopefully there's only one issue in, but it's a great first issue, and I hope that it continues uh, from there. Yeah. And 
kind of on a tangent related to Jonathan Hickman, have you read or been reading East of West? I actually, I'm a couple of issues behind. I've actually been stocking okay. that one up. I, I read the first okay. three. I think just the last two I haven't read yet. Yeah, I will say issue four that came out this week was my favorite one so far. And I started to see, like, how things start to pull together. Mm-hmm. So, you know, another Jonathan Hickman thing. You may not know what's going on, but when you finally do, it makes a lot more sense. Yeah. And then you want to go back and read it again. So yeah. I'm just saying, like, even his independent stuff where, you know, obviously he has a lot more control over what's going on still reflects that, you know, mm-hmm. be patient yeah, and wait. That's, 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 the, that's the buzzword with, with Jonathan Hickman is patience. Mm-hmm. Um, East and West, what I read, I've, I've loved so far. It's uh, it, it, The art in it by Nick Dragata is gorgeous, gorgeous mm-hmm. stuff. It's funny, this week I was going through my pile. You know, I... There are some books where, and this is funny, this is exactly what we say not to do on, on the show, but there are some books that I haven't been reading for m- a couple months, couple, you know, whatever, and I just, I start like, you know, piles together. Yeah. Like, I'll, re- I'll read this one day. Mm-hmm. And my X Factor pile is like 20 issues high at this point, <laughs> but uh, I, I, I realized this week that there were more books on my, oh, put this in the the group of stuff that you haven't been reading pile than there was in the stuff I could actually pick up and read this week. And I was like, this has to change. Like, I have to I have to figure <laughs> out what I'm doing here. You know, I can yeah. only collect, like, Jeff Lemire's Green Arrow for so long before I actually read it and figure out if I really like it or not. Yeah. Because um, yeah. you know, get to a point where, like, do I really need to buy it anymore? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I could, I, I could just wait for the trade. Like, at this yeah. point, I, I'm waiting whole arcs to read stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, like, uh, a uh, book you review very often, Brian Slaymar, Star Wars, the Brian Wood Star Wars. Yes. I read the first three, mm-hmm. and now I have, like, four through eight, like, in a pile. And like, i like, I got to read these ones. And it just, I just, I haven't read them yet. Yeah. But I only do that with, with books. I don't do it for characters. I do it for books with the, their authors that mm-hmm. I really, really like. So Brian Wood, I, I have the stuff stocked up. Yeah. Jeff Lemire, I have stuff stocked up. Like, Revival, I have stocked up, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I will oh, say, and- this month, Star Wars was really, really good. Mm. All right, and before we got here, I just want to ask, um, did you read Saga yet? Yes. <laughs> what do you think of Saga? I, you know how you wait so long for something, and it is really good, but the wait overshadowed how good it was? That's mm-hmm. what I felt. It's a great issue, and um, I feel, I was just like, ah, oh, I just wanted more. I want more from it. I, I have insanely high expectations for Saga, and, you know, it's still like one of the better comics coming out, even if it is, in my opinion, a little bit of a weaker issue. Mm. Yeah, this is actually the first time I have been reading it month to month since I read the first issue. All the other I ones know. I have been, uh, I collected the trades. It's one of the mm-hmm. ones I've been in trade. And I just, after the first time, the first arc, I was fine with it. Part of the second arc was uh, it had increased in popularity, so I, I already, I didn't know exact plot points before I read the trade, but I knew enough that I wasn't mm-hmm. super engaged in everything that's happening. Because I was like, I know something's happening to Lion Cat. I know something's happening to, you know, the girl. I know, you know, mm-hmm. so I, I, uh, I was like, okay, from now on, I have to read it month to month because yeah. I, 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 I don't want to lose the, the thread of the story. And then, uh, actually, our shop uh, sold out of it immediately. Immediately. Mm-hmm. It's, it's crazy how popular it, it's become. Yeah. That, I think I read the image set freshly south that both that and Walking Dead both uh, sold out. Uh, from Diamond uh, on the first day. Mm-hmm. And uh, speaking of that too, it, uh, speaking of Infinity, it sold out from Diamond its 250,000 print run in the, in the first day. That's so, insane. So that's going to be a big book, a very big yeah. book. Um, and it was a good week so far. I mean, I don't want to, we obviously, we'll, we're going to be on tomorrow, so we can talk a little bit more about books tomorrow and we're running a little long here. But uh, mm-hmm. uh, Batman... Batman had some balls on it this week for the stuff that it did. I don't know. I don't know if you I read to, it. I need to. I need to read it. My my husband keeps talking. He tweeted that if Greg Greg Capullo hasn't hit his peak right now as an artist, he predicts within a year he's going to be the big name mm-hmm. out there for artwork. That he's just like his artwork in this last issue overshadowed Scott Snyder's writing, which mm-hmm. is that's a 
pretty heavy statement to say. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty heavy statement. There's some stuff. I mean, we'll we'll talk. We can talk about it more tomorrow, or we can. Yeah. T- I'll talk about it on the show next week. But it's uh, it does the thing that everybody I think was either excited or nervous about regarding year one. Um, mm-hmm. uh, and it takes it takes a pretty bold step. So if people aren't ready yet, read that, and, and we'll 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 get more on that later. But uh, right. So uh, we're gonna be back tomorrow live, same time, 9 a.m. Eastern. Mm-hmm. Um, here uh, at tongcomicbooks.com slash live stream. I also try to put up a post just for comics and coffee live. Uh, check that out. You can keep on us with Twitter at Talking Comics and Facebook.com slash Talking Comics where I'll post the links to, to the show and ask for questions. So get up on that. Um, my personal Twitter is at Bobby Shortle and Mara's? Uh, Marvelous Mara W. All right. Awesome. So guys, thank you so much for joining us on Comics and Coffee. And we will see you guys tomorrow. Have a good day.